Test one, two. Test one, two.
Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning as we gather together in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning's worship service, first of all, welcome to all of you who are here, uh, guests and visitors, as well as those who are watching online uh, with us, all joined together in, in worship no matter where we are. Um, this morning's worship takes place on the third Sunday of Easter, and we'll be using the Tree of Life setting uh, as we come together. This being the third Sunday of Easter, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Please rise with me as you are able, and we'll begin with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. Returning again to the waters of our baptism, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin before God and in the presence of one another. Gracious and merciful God, we confess to you the truth of our broken lives. We have not trusted your promises or walked in your ways. We have hoarded and squandered the gifts of your creation. We have failed to welcome the stranger and the outcast or make room at the table for the homeless and the hungry. We have neither worked to release the oppressed nor admitted our own captivities. Forgive our sin, heal our lives, and set us free that we might live with your whole creation in the justice and joy of your promised future. O God, who is merciful and kind, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, hears the cries of all who plead for mercy, and in these last days has sent Christ Jesus to announce the good news of forgiveness and release to all who are bound by guilt or broken by shame, that they might praise God and serve the world with glad and generous hearts. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Thanks be to God. Let's join together in our gathering hymn, The Day of Resurrection.
Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, the first lesson is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God had raised from the dead. 
To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus, and, and has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did all your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, in, the, in that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Um, we will read Psalm 4 responsively. Answer me when I call, O God, the defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then, do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than grain and wine abound. In peace, I'll lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second lesson is from 1 John chapters, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. Well, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we see him as he is. And all who hope to... All, and all who hope in him to purify themselves just, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either see him, seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The gospel for this third Sunday of Easter is taken from the Gospel of Luke. This from chapter 24, beginning with verse 36. Glory to you, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in, <laughs> in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, 
beginning from Jerusalem, and you are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise come on down here. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of the Sunday school can come up here too now. <laughs> you can be seated. <laughs> Yeah, come on here, you guys. I think we need to run. You think you need to run? Yeah. I, I think you think that a lot. <laughs> come on up, you guys. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. How's your morning been so far? You're very quiet. I have, I have something to show you guys. Actually, I always have something to show you guys, don't I? I have a bag here. It's a plain old bag. But let me dump it out for you. The hat you find in my office... Some of the hats that I wear that you don't find in my office. <laughs> and, and, and my helmet. And I wear these hats at different times. Can you guess when I wear this one? When you're biking, scootering, and rollerblading. When I'm biking, scooter, sc what? <laughs> and rollerblading. What's that? Scootering. <laughs> okay. When I'm scooting around, I, I never thought of those things. Maybe I should wear it when I do those things. Yes. I wear them when I'm on my bike, right? So we have a purpose for this hat. What do you think I wear this hat for? So you protect your hat head from the sun. To protect my hat, my head from the sun. Yeah, not my hat. When I'm playing spike ball, well, I, I don't really play that very well. So I was given this by one of my sons, and I wear it to protect my eyes from the sun and my head from the sun because there's less hair to protect my head these days. So I wear this hat, too, when I'm doing that. When do you suppose I wear this one? In the winter. In the winter. Why do you suppose I wear this one? So, so you're not cold. So I'm not cold. That's right. Sometimes in, in, in this country... Thankfully, it's starting to become spring out there, but in the winter, we wear these kinds of things to keep our heads warm. And so that's when I wear this one. When do you suppose I wear this one? When, 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 you're, you're, at a, when you're at a fashion show. <laughs> <laughs> when you're at a fashion show. When you're at a fashion When you're at a fashion show. 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 No, no, no. I wear... <laughs> the guessing is over. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so you guys had good guesses there. This one I wear just for fun sometimes when I'm around youth and, and maybe you guys. Or Vacation Bible School. Maybe you'll see it again at Vacation Bible School. <laughs> yeah, we don't wear... I don't wear... Hand. Okay, now, now, we wear different hats. And that's kind of a phrase that some grown-ups use to describe what they do. When I wear one hat, I'm, can be, I can be a pastor. When I wear another hat, I can be a bike rider. When I wear a different hat, I'm just outside having some fun. When I wear another hat, I'm keeping my head warm. But today, we heard all about, well, you heard in Sunday school the story of Jesus. Uh, after he rose from the dead, he spent some time with his disciples, <laughs> and then he disappeared back to heaven, right? It's called ascension, and I, and I think you may have learned something about that today. But before Jesus went back to heaven, he made sure that his disciples... Now, if I'm a disciple, let's say a disciple has to wear a hat like this. So now I'm a disciple. But before Jesus went back to heaven, he trained his disciples so that one day when he left, they could become 
the people that proclaim. They're called apostles. That means to, to tell the message of Jesus. And that means putting on a different kind of hat that Isaac just took away from me. <laughs> so let's say this is the apostle hat. So then they wore a different hat so that they could go out and teach the message of Jesus. And in teaching the message of Jesus, Jesus told them, go out into all the world and teach the message that you learned when they were disciples. But now they're not disciples anymore, so they put on a different hat. So even though we're just kind of joking around with these hats, remember that, that right now you're still disciples too. And which hat was the disciple hat again? This one? This one, yes. So kind of you're still wearing this hat. Okay, and, and you're, you're learning all about what Jesus said, what Jesus did, and what Jesus has for you. And then maybe one day, maybe one day, you get to wear the other hat when you have learned and you can tell the story. But that doesn't have to take too long because you can tell the story through what you do even now by loving your neighbor and by telling the message. Okay? And so before Isaac pulls my helmet apart, <laughs> it's going to be crazy glue time now. Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for sending to us Jesus. And that before he went away, he taught his disciples so that they could go out and teach as well. Help us to learn. Help us to also be those who tell the story. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, back to your seats, you guys. And while you do that, I'm going to collect my hats. You want to help me put the hats in here? Okay, there we go. Put them back in there. Okay, you're going to wear that hat, are you? <laughs> okay, go sit down. Go, there's more business to take care of here. <laughs> yes, it's never a dull moment when you have those guys up here. Love it, love it. Let's pray. Gracious God, now may your spirit be here in this place, that the word that we have heard may be a word of instruction, a word of enlightenment, and a word of challenge. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This particular gospel lesson... I hate to tell you this, but you've been a little shortchanged this morning. For some reason, they cut the story in half. Because just before this is the story of the road to Emmaus. And you would have heard the story before of two people, one named Cleopas and the other one um, apparently was a no-name brand human being. Probably Cleopas' wife. And they were on their way back home to Emmaus. And then a stranger comes and walks with them for a while, and they talk about what's been going on in Jerusalem over the past number of days with this Jesus of Nazareth being arrested, beaten, bruised, crucified, and died. And now these two have heard from women of the group that he is not in the tomb and that they have seen him alive and risen and they don't know what to make of it and they don't recognize that the stranger who walks with them is Jesus. And they don't recognize him until the moment when inviting, inviting this stranger in their house to eat with them and to continue the conversation they've been having, he takes the bread, he blesses it and breaks it. And at that point, in the breaking of the bread, they recognize Jesus. And then he's gone. 
And the gospel, the way that it is written, it suggests that he just disappears right in front of them. Somehow this physical Jesus, risen, who proves himself risen by telling his disciples, hey, put your fingers here. Look at my hands and my feet. Know that it is I. I am. So they are so excited, they run all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And this story that you heard this morning happens immediately upon the heels of their excitement and their getting back together with the disciples in that upper room. And they share their story. And immediately upon sharing their story, this is what happens. The disciples are startled by the appearance of Christ himself in this Gospel of Luke. And Jesus enters behind these closed and locked doors and he says, peace be with you. We talked a little bit last week about the peace that Christ brings. The shalom of Christ. The eternal and greater peace that the world cannot give. And this is how he enters this upper room. And they are startled. They are frightened. They've heard the story from the ladies at the tomb. They've heard the story now from Cleopas and the other. And they are still amazed, frightened, fearful. Well, not just fearful. The word used is terrified. Somehow they are terrified. And he asks them, why are you so afraid? See my hands and my feet and know that it is myself, that it is I myself. And then he asks them for something to eat. And what do they give him? Fish. Yes. And not just fish. What kind of fish? You remember? Broiled fish. Do you think you could give something a little better to the risen Messiah to eat? than broiled fish. It's almost like lutefisk. <laughs> I, knew, I knew you wouldn't see too much wrong with that, Bob. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's broiled fish. But the point is not what they fed him to eat. The point is what that Jesus ate. But in this moment, it's not just about proving who Jesus is. The message is the important thing now. The message of the risen Christ is what becomes in important. And so Jesus goes on from there to say, These are my, my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, all these things must be fulfilled. And then he opens their minds, it says, to understand And then he says, thus it is written, the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. And you, you are witnesses to these things. So it's not just Jesus feeding them the message he says, guess what? <laughs> you know how this message is going to get out from this upper room? It's you guys. And how does the message get out from Good Shepherd? It's you guys. <laughs> oh, yes, you have a hired pastor, a, hi a hired gun, so to speak, that goes out there and, and all of that. But you are the witnesses, too. You are the witnesses to whom Christ has come, where you are behind the locked doors, your locked doors. Jesus entering your life despite your fear and trepidation and says to you, you are witnesses to these things. Believing in the risen Christ, well, you've heard the phrase that Christianity is nothing but a crutch. It's not a crutch. <laughs> Anything but. Oh, it is, it is 
absolutely helpful. And in moments when we are in pain, whether that pain is physical or emotional or spiritual, Christianity and knowing the risen Christ is with you, in that moment is a profound and spiritual help. Knowing that you, you, <laughs> like John writes in that first letter, you are a child of God. And that God's love, and, and I love this phrase, I love this phrase, see what love the Father has given us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what you are. That is what we are. And I like to put the emphasis right there. That is what we are. Not what we will be. Not what we will someday become in the kingdom that comes down the road somewhere. It's not what we become the moment that we die and our bodies pass from this life. No, no, it's not that. That is what we are. This is the love of God given to us. That Christ has come. Christ has shown in many and various ways that he is Messiah, and yet he reminds his disciples that in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, the word is there that says Messiah must suffer and die, and on the third day rise. And so, you witnesses of the risen Christ, this Christ this one who has suffered and died and risen. This one comes to you, even through the work of the Holy Spirit and by God's word, we believe. And so we become witnesses, knowing that we are children of God already. And if we are children of God already, then we have the promises of Christ already. And that because we have these promises already, when Christ enters our room, what are we afraid of? When Christ says, you are witnesses, now go out into all the world and tell the story, proclaim the message of Christ, what are we afraid of? When we are faced with a world of doubt, and skepticism, what are we afraid of? When our own hearts and minds, like, a, like Thomas, oh yes, doubting Thomas, we talked about that last week too. He wasn't the only one. Here you see that the rest of the disciples were in the same boat. And that's a pun. A bad one. <laughs> But they're in the, they are in the same human boat. And they doubt too. How can this be? How can someone who has died rise again and be standing right in front of us? And it is no ghost. And we will be no ghost but we will have the presence of the Holy Ghost. And so in this Gospel of Luke, Jesus prepares them for something yet greater than this. And that's hard to imagine greater than this. But the story that we have, the first lesson that, uh, that was read this morning by Audrey is a story about the disciples who take this, this direction of Christ seriously. You are witnesses. And they go out and they proclaim the word and they do the word. And the story is about Peter healing some guy and people think that it's Peter. And Peter says, no, 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 no. It's not me. It's not me. It is Christ. It is through the power of Christ that we do these things. So when we witnesses 
to Christ the risen one are called witnesses. And if we're called witnesses, then we are instructed by Christ through these disciples to become the apostles too. That's not an easy chore. And that's why Christianity can be so difficult. We show Christ in our lives. We speak Christ in our lives. We walk with Christ in our lives. What are we afraid of? There's nothing on this earth, and Paul would write in his letter to the Romans, there is nothing on this earth that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No power on earth or in the heavens that can do that, he says. And if that is true, then there is nothing in heaven or on earth that we need to be afraid of anymore because it is the risen Christ who comes to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, through the hands and the feet of others, and through the voice of others, Christ comes to us still. And in that strange and bewildering way, through bread, through wine. He gives himself to us over and over again. It is a life that we have that can now be lived in the risen one. There's nothing to be afraid of. And if there's nothing to be afraid of, putting on that hat that says apostle on it, Becomes easier. And maybe a little more fashionable. So you, witnesses, do not be afraid. Be the witnesses of Christ. Amen. Let's join together in singing our hymn of the day. Rise up, O saints of God. Rejoicing that Christ is risen and love has triumphed over the grave. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. O merciful God of resurrection life, you feed our deepest hungers. As fearful disciples knew the presence of the risen Christ, we pray that you make your presence known to us in the sharing of this holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity the abundant life that you give. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our creator, 
you bring forth all life in, on earth. As spring weather begins, we, even know, we know even through nature that life renews and spring brings renewal. Bring peace to this troubled world that storms of war are, so that the storms of war are calmed. Environmental destruction is ceased. Clean water is given freely to all who thirst so that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. Oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human understanding or knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, you care for all your children. Regardless of race or creed or place of birth, encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief. Instill hope and certainty in the risen Christ especially those we know who have lost someone close to them. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your son, Jesus, promised that we are held in your love forever and called children of the kingdom, your children. We remember our beloved who have died, especially those who have passed from this life recently. We pray for those who mourn. We remember all whom we know who need our prayers, those on our prayer list and those in our hearts. Hear now our prayers as we bring these all before you. Now into your hands, O oh merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another. Let's continue with our offertory song, Come, Let Us Bring. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witness in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. to the Lord our God. Amen. 
indeed right and good that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, holy God, almighty and immortal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the day of your final jubilee dawned on your Son, Jesus Christ, your anointed one who announced good news to the poor, bound up the brokenhearted, and set the captives free. And so with the earth, sky, and sea, and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, and with the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and the last, life's beginning and its end. You, call, you called us to live as your people and promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Send now your Holy Spirit, O God, upon these gifts and all who share in this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts and at last feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. join together in the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Once again, as we celebrate, as you come to the front, all, all baptized children of God are welcome to come. And uh, when you arrive here, if you need gluten-free, simply hold one finger up and we'll ensure that you're able to commune with gluten-free bread instead. And likewise with the wine, for those who would require the grape juice instead, uh, please be aware that on our trays, the dark stuff is, is the wine, the light stuff is the grape juice. And so you can take the light-colored stuff if that is your requirement. You may come for the Feast of Christ is ready for you.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, in this meal you have bound us to yourself. At this table we have tasted your goodness. Strengthen us by your grace that we might more perfectly praise you and more faithfully love one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of an unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Let's join together in singing our ascending hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. You may be seated for a few brief announcements before we are dismissed. Uh, first of all, I'd like to call on Terry to make a special announcement. Okay, so Easter's, we've gotten past Easter. Now it's time for us to begin in earnest planning for Vacation Bible School. Yay! <laughs> All right, so we had our first meeting with uh, the center leaders and a few other leaders this past week, and we are very excited. Camp Firelight is our theme for this year, and Miss Bonnie is already very well versed in the songs, so we're very excited. What we need now is a lot of volunteers. Um, we have, well, we have a a history of being able to have as many as 60 kids here. And in order to make that happen for those 60 kids, we need about 40 volunteers all total. Some of the jobs are small, you know, just maybe an hour or two during the week of VBS. Some of it is beforehand, some of it is like, big stuff like traveling or bigger stuff with like traveling with the the groups as they go from station to station so we have all kinds of jobs for people to do um, and that's adults and youth I'm talking to you guys back there and you there <clears throat> yeah. so if you could connect with me or Darlene call the office email the office we'd love to get your name on our list our next meeting is going to be on May 7th it's a Tuesday evening and that's when uh, we need all of our volunteers here. We want to be teaching you guys some of the songs. We want to be going over the theme, all of that kind of thing that evening. So, again, connect with me and, or Darlene, and we're very excited about this. So, talk to you soon. Hey, good, good morning. Um, some of you may or may not have noticed, but in the bulletin, I put a little note in uh, in regards to the cross that we have not had on our church in some time. 
Uh, so I invite you, I'll be around this uh, after service. I invite anyone who has any ideas, please come see me, let's engage in conversation and let's come up with a way so that we can fix that. I'd like to see something happen this summer if possible, but let's get the discussion going anyway. Thank you. All right, um, some other announcements that need to be made this afternoon at 2.30. Um, the uh, children and family bowling event takes place, and that's over at Heritage Lanes. Uh, there was a sign-up list back there. It looks like we're going to have a lot of people out there this afternoon for that. $5 a person or $20 a family. Um, if you haven't signed up yet and you'd like to talk to Terry, um, but we have those lanes that are, that are booked off for our group, and it will be a lot of fun. Um, the Living the Questions Bible Study continues through April, and we uh, continue to have great discussions at, at this event. And uh, even if you haven't come out before uh, or haven't been able to, Friday afternoons from 1 to 2.30 through, through April. And um, uh, as I said, a very, very good discussion time for everyone there. Kuriakis Gathers Together is uh, an annual event that Camp Kuriakis has. And it's a fundraising event, a dinner, a dance, and a silent auction, all uh, to raise funds for Camp Kuriakis out there on Sylvan Lake. And uh, we will enjoy having that. And then, um, actually at the end of this month too, um, Camp Kuriakis... It will be Camp Kuriakis Sunday here on the 28th, and uh, please mark that off on your calendar, and you'll be able to meet some of the staff that comes from, uh, from the camp there. The, if we go to the, to the next one, Bill, the let's go swimming. So the youth are going swimming. Some of them might even swim. I don't know. Anyway, on April the 28th at 2 p.m. at Collicut, and I think that's $5 a person. And then after the swimming is done, these wet and soggy kids will <laughs> come to the, the lenses? No. Okay. Karen. <laughs> well, no. We're, we're not ready yet. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's, that's on the 28th. So for our, our youth and uh, uh, some people surrounding the youth, like parents and so forth, mark that off on your calendars. It'll be a lot of fun. And do we have a next one? A dismissal. Okay. Well, there, there, is, there is a couple more things, though, before we go there. I mentioned the camp Sunday as well. New member classes have started on, uh, on Saturday, yesterday. Uh, if you're still interested in being a member here, you aren't yet, do come out. It's uh, going to be next Saturday again at 10 a.m. Uh, goes till about noon. And uh, then we have um, St. Luke's Anglican Spring Tea and Sale. That's on Saturday, April the 27th. And that will feature a light luncheon of sandwiches and goodies. And they'll have baked goods, plants, gently used clothing, accessories, and books for sale as well. And if you want more information about that, you can contact St. Luke's Anglican here in town. So you can mark that off on your calendar as well. I think that's all the important notes that I can think of this morning. Are there any other notes to make known this morning? None? Kids, can you bring my hats back? Okay. No. no. <laughs> they want to keep the hats. If you all please rise for the dismissal. Now go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord. <laughs>